Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss about caps block. It is uh, one of my small contributions in the vast field of regional anesthesia. These are my declarations. The CAPS acronym stands for Crosswise Approach to Popliteal Sciatic. Here, crosswise means across or transverse. It is about an alternative approach of popliteal sciatic nerve block in supine position. Recently, we have published the anatomical and technical details of the CAPS block, including a case series. I will share the links in the description. Uh, I am grateful to my co-authors and especially Dr. Karthik Sonwane for proposing the term CAPS for this approach. So what is the CAPS block? Why do we need this block? Is it different from the available ultrasound guided popliteal sciatic nerve block approaches? Will it change the current technique for below knee surgeries? I believe you will get the answers after hearing this lecture. I would also like to request you to share your thoughts about CAPS block in the comment section below. Popliteal sciatic nerve block or popliteal fossa block is a widely practiced regional anesthesia technique for below knee surgeries. It is either used alone or in combination with femoral or saphenous nerve block to provide complete analgesia. If we look at the literature, various approaches have been described to perform ultrasound guided sciatic nerve block in the popliteal region. According to the patient position, it can be performed in prone and lateral positions with posterior approach, supine position with posterior, medial and lateral approaches. Depending on the needling technique or trajectory, it could be in plane, out of plane, lateral to medial, medial to lateral or posterior to anterior. Few modifications like uh, reverse sims position, gapped supine and figure of four positions were also tried to overcome the technical difficulties faced in the conventional approaches. In prone position, it is easy to get an optimized image of sciatic nerve in, in the popliteal region. And also it is convenient for the anesthesiologist but it is time consuming, requires assistance to make the patient prone and then again supine after the block. Also, there is a risk of airway compromise, especially in sedated patients. Lateral decubitus gives better airway access compared to the prone position, but technical issues like transducer stabilization, image optimization are there. It also needs assistance to change the patient's position, which is again time consuming. Positional change can be difficult or harmful in patients with spine injury, morbid obesity, hemodynamic instability, patients on mechanical ventilation or in pregnant lady. Hence, PSNB in supine position is an attractive alternative to provide better patient comfort while performing this block. So let's focus on the various ultrasound guided supine popliteal sciatic nerve block approaches and their technical issues. In supine lateral approach, the transducer is placed posteriorly over the popliteal fossa and the needle is inserted from lateral to medial side. Additional assistance is required for positioning. The flexion at knee introduces an uneven surface and elevation might cause rolling of the leg. Hence, transducer stabilization and optimal image acquisition 
and also the needle manipulation may be difficult sometimes the operator's hand also gets tired in this position which ultimately affects the performance in supine posterior approach patient position and probe placement will be same as the supine lateral approach the needle is inserted in out of plane technique from posterior to anterior direction similar technical issues may arise here to overcome the problems faced with the flexed knee position gapped supine position was described as you can see in this picture but it failed to solve all the issues later in 2016 taha described two different techniques of supine medial approach for popliteal sciatic nerve block still few issues remain the same if you observe carefully lifting the leg or flexion at hip or knee joints is required in all these previously described supine approaches limb movements may result in pain in the non anesthetized leg or misalignment of non stabilized fracture segments sometimes it is not possible to perform these approaches without deep sedation central neuraxial block or general anesthesia hence we need a technique to perform the supine popliteal sciatic nerve block in neutral or anatomical limb position i propose a possible solution to all these problems would be caps block or crosswise approach to popliteal sciatic block let me discuss the relevant anatomy for caps block the sciatic nerve enters the popliteal fossa through its apex and diverges into two terminal branches tibial and the common peroneal nerves these divergences can occur at any level from the sacral plexus its origin to the popliteal crease cadaveric studies demonstrated the point of divergence at 0 to 11.5 cm even up to 18.5 cm above the popliteal crease where tibial and the common peroneal nerves leave the common paraneural sheath if we put the ultrasound probe along the lateral aspect of the distal thigh perpendicular to the table it aligns the ultrasound beam perpendicular to the sciatic nerve generating a transverse cross sectional image the distal transverse approach visualizes the sciatic nerve in short axis medial to the biceps femoris muscle the schematic shows the transverse section of the lower thigh at the popliteal fossa before and after the divergence of the tibial and the common peroneal nerves we are catching the nerve here at or above the point of divergence this slide depicts the relevant sonu anatomy for caps block the left one is with the linear probe and the right one is with the curvy linear probe I usually choose linear transducer for pediatric and thin built adult patients. And curvilinear probe for well built muscular adult and obese patients.
like other approaches of popliteal sciatic block caps block can be used for regional anesthesia or analgesia for lower leg ankle or foot surgeries along with femoral or saphenous nerve block it can provide complete analgesia for various below knee lower limb procedures the patient is placed in supine position and the limb in the neutral or anatomical position extended at the hip and knee joints sometimes slight internal rotation may be needed which patients can do themselves without any external assistance a folded towel or soft pillow or foam elevator may be placed underneath the cuff muscle to create room for pro placement and needling but this is purely optional not required at all the success of caps block technique depends on the appropriate positioning of the ultrasound transducer over the lateral aspect of the distal thigh in the transverse plane and targeting the sciatic nerve at or above the point of divergence the ultrasound transducer is placed perpendicular to the skin over the lateral aspect of the thigh initially it is positioned on or below the intermuscular groove formed by vastus lateralis and biceps femoris muscle it corresponds to the upper border of the patella just proximal to the level of the popliteal crease then the probe is moved in a cephalic direction to identify the hyperechoic sciatic nerve before the divergence surrounded by hypoechoic muscles and hyperechoic shaft of femur our goal is to identify the hyperechoic sciatic nerve at or above the divergence then place the needle tip in the subparaneural space and inject the local anesthetic within the paraneural sheet to create a donut sign post procedure drug spread can be assessed by scanning below the level of divergence here you can see both tibial and the common peroneal nerves are fully soaked with local anesthetic caps block can be performed at 5 to 10 cm proximal to popliteal crease at or above the point of divergence where the popliteal vessels may or may not appear in the image according to the area of scanning
caps block is simple and convenient for the patient as well as the anesthetist it is performed in the anatomical or neutral limb position it differs from the previously described supine ultrasound guided approaches it does not require additional assistance flexion at hip or knee joints or any positional devices it can provide complete analgesia for below knee surgeries when used along with uh, saphenous nerve block thank you all for watching and patient listening for more updates please like share and subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon thank you